Welcome to this week's class. This is the final class of the term, and we're going to finish up the term talking about how strategic uh, human resource management impacts an organization. So let's begin. So as we already know, strategic HRM wants to improve uh, the success of our business through the people and how those people can be um, developed to their fullest potential or utilized in the most productive way in order for the employees to help the, the company meet the business, um, the business goals. So a strategic HRM basically is centered around the employee's well-being. It's not just looking for um, processes and aspects of strategic HRM that involves being part of strategic decisions, which we have seen that that is also uh, true of strategic HRM, but employee well-being. And employee well-being is increasingly becoming one of the most important aspects of HR. So basically the main assumption that underpins the practice of strategic HRM is that people are the organization's key resource. And the way that the company, the company will be as successful as its weakest link. So if we create a number of HR policies and processes that are developed and implemented in the most effective way in order to um, ensure that the most important resource, the employees, the human resources, are uh, being taken well care of and their needs are being met, then this is going to have a very positive impact on the organization's performance. So research has actually been done um, to try to test the link between HRM practices and organizational performance. And lots of research has undergone and it has been proven that this is that this is in fact true. And it has been this research has been done via uh, looking to respond to the following two questions. Number one, do HR practices make a positive impact on organizational performance? And number two, if so, how is the impact achieved? And of course, the first one is more theoretical, but the second one is the most important uh, question that needs to be answered because we don't just say that it's a good thing. We have to actually prove how um, this impact has been achieved. So for example, um, we can see how uh, there are a number of leading, leading experts that have put have kind of taken this with a grain of salt because they can see that there can be doubts that arise out of the attempts of this research. So for example, Purcell and others um, specified that their study had demonstrated convincingly that research, which only asks about number and extent of HR practices, will not be sufficient to understand the link between HR and business performance. So it is. We can. It can be said that it is misleading to assume that simply because the HR policies are present, that they will have a positive impact if they aren't implemented as intended. So uh, Purcell actually coined the term "black box," and basically he compares um, the the explanation or what lies between intentions and outcomes as black box. As we know, the world is filled with good intentions, but um, many times the actions are not um, in keeping with those good intentions. So basically this is the same thing, but taken to um, strategic HRM, where we see that there are outcomes that have been put into practice and implemented in an organization with the intention to improve performance, et cetera, but the actual result of that implementation has not been, um, has not reached the goal or has not resulted in what um, the organization was hoping to. So we can see, for example, research that has been done on the link between HRM and the organization's performance. So we can see, for example, here, um, the researcher Arthur had three different research, um, three different uh, studies that were using data from 30 U.S. strip mills to assess how impact um, the impact on labor efficiency and scrap rate by reference to the ex to the existence of either a high commitment strategy or a control strategy. So basically, what author implemented with this methodology is two groups one with a high commitment strategy and another with a control strategy in order to see 
if one or the other will um, increase the, the organization's performance. What was the outcome, the results? Well, those organizations, the group with the high commitment strategy had significantly higher levels of both productivity and quality than those with the control strategy. So what can we see here? Well, obviously, organizations that have HR policies that are made for people to commit to, to be empowered, to feel a part of, and to be aligned with, are going to be, are going to respond much better and are going to be more productive in their business, in their uh, jobs, than an organization that is just controlling and supervising. Huslid, who did another study in 1995, analyzed the response of almost 1,000 U.S. companies. And basically, he used a questionnaire which explores the use of high-performance work practices, the development of synergies between them, and the alignment of these practices with the organization's competitive strategy. What was the result? Well, productivity, he showed that productivity was influenced by employee motivation. Financial performance is influenced by employee skills, motivation by employee skills, motivation on organizational structures. So we can see that once again, the well-being, the employee's well-being, and the motivation of the employee here yet again is, is showing that it's going to have a positive impact on the organization's um, results. Huslid and Becker created another study in 1996, and basically what they did was they created an index of HR system in almost uh, 800 firms, and, and the, this index indicated to what degree each firm adopted a high-performance work system. And what did they see? Well, those organizations that have high values on the index had economically and statistically higher levels of performance. Patterson and others, 1997, chose to research the link between business performance and an organization's culture and the use of a number of HR practices. What were the results? Well, they showed that HR practices can explain significant variations in profitability and productivity from 19% and 1%. And two HR practices of, all, of the number of HR practices that they researched were very significant. One, the acquisition and development of employee skills, investing in your employees' education, helping them to have a career path, um, development, et cetera. And two, job design, including flexibility, responsibility, variety, and the use of formal teams. So the way that uh, the way that the job is designed for the person will also have a greater impact on how productive they are in their in their job, of course. Then there was another uh, another uh, study done by the 1998 Workplace Employee Relations Survey. And this survey um, was analyzed by Guest et al. in the year 2000, and it had sampled around 2,000 workplaces and obtained the views of about 20, 28,000 employees. And what did they see? That there is a very strong link between HR management and both employee attitudes and workplace performance. Then um, Guest also took a look at the Future of Work survey, also in 2000, and looked at almost 900 private sector organizations that uh, had been surveyed for that uh, study and interviews that were carried out with 610 HR professionals and 462 CEOs. And what did he see uh, upon an analyzing this study? That if the company has an increased use of HR practices, this is associated with higher levels of employee commitment. Again, we're talking about commitment and contribution to the organization. And of course, if this is linked to being more productive and having higher quality of services. And to finish up Purcell in the year 2003, um, at the University of Bath made a study of 12 companies to establish how People management directly impacts an organization's behavior, uh, performance, excuse me. And the result was that the most successful companies had uh, what they coined the big idea. This means that the companies had a very clear vision and a very specific set of integrated values that were embedded into the company culture, ingrained into, into the company's culture, enduring 
throughout time, collective, they were measured and they were managed. And these companies were concerned with sustaining performance and flexibility. So this proved that there was clear edit evidence between positive attitudes towards HR policies and practices, levels of satisfaction, motivation and commitment and operational performance. So again, we're talking about commitment. And again, we're talking about the employee's well-being. So it's not just creating the policy, but it's implementing and practice uh, implementing those practices. It's not in the number of practices itself, but implementing them properly, which is the most important factor that we have to consider in linking people management to business performance. And this is primarily, according to Purcell, one of the most important tasks that have to be undertaken by line managers. So this brings me to the end of this part of the class. I will be right back with the second half.